I was asked to do some tapping for caddies, C-A-D-I, caused accidental death or injury. And I did a round with uh, two women. One was the mother of a caddy and the other was a caddy herself in order to have folks who had that experience and that knowledge so that we could co-create it. And it's presented here now for you. Please keep in mind, I am not a licensed therapist. Uh, this is not intended to replace therapy. This is a matter of using this stress relief technique to help continue processing the emotions that are around this. I encourage you actually to maybe have someone present because you may find talking about these things triggering. And as with any of my tapping videos, uh, I'm gonna ask you to take full responsibility for your own well being. And I certainly hope this will provide a lot of benefit. But please do practice self care as, uh, as we approach this, this, um, this issue of being involved and feeling responsible and being responsible for the pain that someone else has experienced. Uh, the presentation is done because of this belief that, well, you're a magnificent child of the universe, worthy and deserving of peace and love and joy and uh, allowing yourself to feel more peace so that you can spread more peace. Thanks. Okay. So shall I, you can hear me still? Yeah, excellent. Yep. Um, so um, I'm I'm Kate, and I um, am the mother of a caddy, which in a caddy is someone who's caused accidental death or injury, and in my case, it was my son who caused the accidental death of his girlfriend, and um, this tragedy happened in our lives just over three and a half years ago, and. Um, when it happened, I found that I had very little to support me in my trying to support my son. My son had very little to support him, and I felt as though I was, I was it. I was the person whose job it was to try and bring him back to a place where he could be in this world, because he was completely not in this world after the accident. Um, and I was looking around for resources, and I really couldn't find very many resources at all. I found Hyacinth Fellowship, which is a website that I think Jen will talk about a little bit later. But um, it was an American website, and it just wasn't quite as um, on point for me. I'm living in New Zealand, and it had no resources, of course, linking me to anywhere in New Zealand. And it was people on the ground that I needed to get support from in New Zealand. So I went about putting together a website that would address people who found themselves in this circumstance in New Zealand, both the people who had caused the accidents that had taken someone's life or caused great injury, or those people who were supporting them. Because as I discovered, I felt as though it was my accident. It was a huge trauma for me to have to support my son to have to listen to those first phone calls to have to embrace him and all of those first first things that happened that was a huge trauma for me and then having to try and work out how to support him was the biggest emotional adventure I have ever been on so it was um quite something it still is quite something even what seems for some people would seem like um three and a half years was not that long but actually it's nothing <laughs> there's still a lot of fear and sadness and um, trauma attached attached to it and of course sitting in the background behind all of this we're remembering the beautiful young woman who lost her life and their family and that's part of the ongoing trauma and grief is that you know that you have by means of your family caused this pain for another group of people yeah 
Um, so anyway, as I'm progressing, putting together this website and thinking, oh, I'd really love to have some tapping because I have personally went and had some counselling and I worked with a um, therapist who introduced me to tapping and she told me about tapping with Brad so that I could continue using tapping when I needed it on my own. And so I was using your um, little tapping videos frequently to support myself. But when I came to putting together the website, it, it became obvious to me that the, the tapping videos weren't providing enough for those who had actually caused the accident. And so I reached out to you and said, hey, let's, would we, could you please do a tapping video that, that addressed the underlying shame that, that comes from and the sense that you you just can't ever feel joy or you have no right to get peace in your life or calm in your life or feel any joy or any hope that your life will be any better. Um, that sits under everything that you, you're doing for yourself. So that was why I reached out to you and you said, yes, you would come on, come on board. And, and here we are today, which is great. And then you reached out yeah. to Hyacinth, and uh, do that, we have Jen with us. Hi. Yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm Jen Eichenhorst, and I am an advisory board member of Hyacinth. A founding member, Marianne, the founder, was a dear friend, and we miss her very much. And I echo everything that, Kate, that you just said. It very much happens not only to the caddy, um, I, um, my accident was in 2016 involving a motorcyclist. So I just honored the seven year anniversary of my experience. And this is very much still a part of me today where it still feels sometimes just as fresh as yesterday, even though I'm on the other end close to a decade. And we know that these experiences, the median average person that attends Hyacinth, their accident was sometimes 40, 15, 20 years ago, and they're still experiencing these episodes of coping with the grief, the shame, the guilt. So it is ongoing. And so Hyacinth Fellowship works to support caddies all around the world. We have a bi monthly meeting, both with an expressive writing group and just a monthly fellowship where we try to have speakers come in or each of us take turns sharing our experiences. And sometimes we just give reflective questions on how to cope. So that's kind of like the format. We are not a support group by nature, but more of a fellowship in um, this healing journey, as Marianne would have said. And I personally used uh, tapping um, for for as one of my tools that I could use when I was having difficult times, especially in the beginning, uh, when I was driving or in some intense emotion that I had to just ride the wave. And it was something that I used to help center myself in conjunction with prayer and meditation. And um, uh, I also have a podcast called uh, Accidental Hope, and um, this is a great asset to um, for any of our listeners or any of our members to to use as an aid for healing. So thank you, Brad, for um, thinking of us and providing this for thousands upon thousands of people. We believe that this happens in America alone about 18 minutes. Every 18 minutes, there is an accidental death with a caddy involved. And if you um, include serious injury, well, that is sometimes tenfold. Um, if you include uh, things like COVID, those that have um, got their loved one sick, um, that is, we don't even have numbers on that so yeah yeah well i'm grateful for the opportunity i uh, as i often explain to folks i always wear this blue wristband that says cultivate peace and to cultivate peace in the world we need peace in ourselves and and that's for everybody it's not a matter of, well only for peace who have never you know been involved in anybody ever being hurt because there is no one on this planet that hasn't in some way been been connected 
And yeah, so, uh, so I was thinking that the first thing that we might do is do a round on this belief of, I don't get to feel good. I'm not allowed mm -hmm. to feel good. So uh, real quick for anyone who's watching this, who has no knowledge of, of tapping <laughs> or uh, EFT, emotional freedom techniques is uh, the, the basis for, for this. Um, it's, uh, we, we call it tapping because we're literally going to be tapping with our fingertips on our face and torso. And if you're new to this, I know it sounds weird, but trust me, uh, there, there's a lady, uh, there's a reason why these two ladies have both done this because it's a very beneficial tool. It's based on acupuncture. So for thousands of years in Chinese medicine, they've said there's this flow of energy uh, through the body along these pathways that are called meridians. And when this energy is flowing naturally, we experience our natural state of health and well being, physically and emotionally. And when this energy gets stuck, we don't feel so good. And when we don't feel good, we don't think as clearly, we don't make the best choices. And traumatic experiences can cause that energy to get stuck. So in traditional Chinese medicine, the doctor would stick needles in these key points and we're just gonna be stimulating these same areas with uh, our fingertips. So what we would, the, the very basic version of EFT is to take whatever the issue is. So, you know, if it's just, I'm, I'm feeling stressed out right now, I we talked about when you're driving, <laughs> it's like, okay, I, I feel stressed when I think about driving. So it'd say, okay, on a scale of zero to 10, how much stress do you feel? And you might say, oh, it's a, it's an eight. And where in your body do you feel it? Oh, I, I feel this tightness in my chest or I feel a knot in my stomach. So we're aware of what the, what the issue, particular issue is. It may sometimes be as vague as I feel stress, I feel fear. Sometimes it may be more specific of I'm, I'm remembering the accident or a particular moment of the accident. So we take whatever, whatever the thing is that's bothering us, rate it on a scale of zero to 10 as to how much it's bothering us. And then we would gently tap with the uh, index and middle finger with the fingertips. We're going to gently tap on the side of your opposite hand. And that's where we repeat the setup phrase. We'd say, even though I feel this stress, or even though I'm upset about the accident, whatever it might be, I choose to love and accept myself. We'll repeat that three times. We're just stating a level of acceptance because too often we try to push things away and what we resist persists. So we want to just say, even though this happened, even though I'm feeling this, I choose to love and accept myself. Then we'll go through these eight points right at the beginning of your eyebrow. And we'll gently tap each of these points. It's usually between five and 10 times, but you don't have to keep count. It's not an exact science of, uh, you tap 12 times, now it won't work. <laughs> and then we'll repeat whatever the issue is. So let's just say with stress, all this stress, we'll tap the corner of your eye, all this stress. Then right under the middle of your eye, just right along the edge of the eye socket, all this stress. Right under your nose, all this stress. Right under your lower lip, just above your chin, all this stress. And right here where your collarbones just about come together, there's a point, it's about an inch to the side, either side, right where that U shape is the base of your throat. And you can tap with all of your fingertips and cover that whole area, or you can make a fist and tap uh, where the collarbones come together, all this stress. Next point is about four inches below your armpit. It's right about bra strap level. And I'm sure even the guys can figure out where that is. All this stress. And finally, the top of your head. So just tap with all of your fingertips around the crown of your head. You can say all this stress. You take a deep breath. And let it go. Then you check in again with whatever level of stress, whatever it was that was bothering you. Check with the tightness in your chest or the stomach, wherever that physical issue was, and rate it again on a scale of zero to 10. Sometimes with tapping, we'll go from an eight to zero like that. It's not the norm, but it does, act, it does happen with some frequency. It may just go from an eight to a 7.75. If you've been carrying around an eight for a while, 7.75 is gonna feel like some relief. And then we can look again and, and tap again, even though I still feel some stress this remaining stress, this remaining stress. And each time that number can come down. 
And what often happens is it's like peeling the layers of the onion. So as we're tapping along this stress, this stress, oh, I know what this is about. And we get more clarity. And as we get more clarity, we can be more specific in terms of what we're talking about. And the tapping becomes even more effective. So I just like to lay out the, uh, the basics of, of EFT so that as we go into this tapping rounds, the way that I do it, where it's an intuitive process and I'll be saying different things that just come to mind, then um, for anyone who's new to this, they don't say, wow, tapping is really complicated. You have to come up with all of these words and the scripting. It's like, nope. No, you don't. <laughs> and Jen and I were talking earlier about uh, prayers. And um, you were saying that, that sometimes you would just say prayers while you were tapping mm -hmm. to help calm down that emotional response. And sometimes we don't need to say anything. If we're feeling emotional distress, just this tapping alone, you know, even though it's based on uh, Chinese medicine, which is thousands of years old, we have modern research validating that this is a very profound method of stress relief. There are actually a number of um, biological markers that have been studied showing that there are a number of physiological as well as psychological benefits to tapping. That's why I recommend it on a daily basis. It's like brushing your teeth or taking a shower. You have physical hygiene. This is energy hygiene. So whatever situation you might be in, even if you don't have something traumatic coming to mind on a regular basis, doing some daily tapping is helpful. So now let's, uh, let's do this round. So if, I'm gonna invite everyone to close your eyes. Take a deep breath and let it go. Now just breathing comfortably with your eyes closed. Just allow yourself to be present, allowing yourself to be right here, right now, as present as possible so as to receive maximum benefit from our time together. Just following your breath through your body, just allowing yourself to be aware of what you're feeling physically and emotionally. Say, I deserve to be happy. I deserve to be happy. And just let that rattle around inside. And notice on a scale of zero to 10, how true that feels. 10 would be, well, of course, happiness is our birthright. And don't judge yourself harshly if the number is lower than you'd like it to be. Just allow yourself to be aware of where that is. And all of those thoughts and beliefs and memories that come up as to why you couldn't or shouldn't be happy. Why you don't deserve to be happy. Why you don't deserve to be successful. Why you don't deserve to thrive because of something you've done, because of somehow you've been connected to something that's been done. looking at the, the responsibility that you're taking for the pain that someone else has experienced. And just look at the beliefs around why that takes you out of the running for happiness. Notice where in your body you might be feeling this. Maybe it may be a feeling of shame. It may be a feeling of guilt, self-blame. It could be a number of different things. Just allow yourself to be aware what feelings come up, where in your body you hold on to them, and on a scale of zero to 10, how strong they might be. Take a deep breath, open your eyes. So Jen and Katie, if you want, just, want to just briefly share what, what kind of number is coming up and where you might be feeling it. Um, for me, <clears throat> my brain tells me that it's a 10, but my heart tells me, I can't even give it a number, it just, I just have all these swirling thoughts and emotions. So. Yeah, and that's often how it is. Uh, we use the numbers to try to yeah. help, us, but it's not always clear, so we, that's why we look for where we feel it. Yeah, okay, Jen? Yeah. I think in this moment, just from my day, you know, um, I feel at a six, you know, something I'm not on edge, but I did notice that I needed those deep breaths. I needed those cleansing breaths and I needed to be reminded of where my energy goes and how often I still do think about my, my trauma and, um, 
but I, I do feel, I felt better after the cleansing breaths. I realized then, I didn't know before we started that I needed those until I did them. Well, that's the thing is we often have no idea how much stress or discomfort we're hanging on to it. You know, we all have ambient levels, especially because most of us are walking around with one of these that's constantly saying, Hey, here's something else to be upset about. Yeah. So or that I operate, I yeah. operate probably at a certain level yeah. because of the trauma Yes. and that I don't notice until I bring it down. And then I feel the relief and realize, Oh, I, I, I brought that down a little bit. And some expectation of, well, you should always feel a little bit of discomfort. I mean, after all. Yeah. And that's and that's where we hopefully will, uh, the breaths are helpful, but now let's see what we can do with some tapping to uh, shift that even more. Mm -hmm. So just tapping where I tap and repeating back what I say. And actually, I'm going uh, to mute you guys just so that um, on the recording, it... Uh, it stays just on, on me tapping these points because I want everyone um, following along to say it out loud because we tend to be more emotionally engaged when we speak out loud. Even though I might doubt that I deserve to be happy, I choose to love and accept myself. Even though I might doubt that I have a right to be happy, I choose to love and honor myself. Even though I might doubt that I have that I even though I might doubt that I deserve to be happy. Because I'm responsible for some pain. And I may have all kinds of beliefs about why I should continue suffering. Maybe because someone else expects me to. And that's the least I can do. And even though I have doubts about how much happiness I deserve, I choose to deeply and completely love, honor, and accept myself. And maybe anyone else involved in this. Because I choose to be that free. Okay, so tap into the points. All these doubts about how much happiness I deserve. All these doubts about whether I have the right to be happy. even though the accident was an accident. I still feel a need to take responsibility to the extent that I feel shame and guilt. And I need to sentence myself to limited happiness. I don't know when I'll complete that sentence. I'm not sure when I'll be set free and allow myself even greater happiness. But part of me might say, not yet. Part of me might believe. Other people have suffered I haven't suffered enough yet. And I choose to love and appreciate those parts of me that are trying so hard to do what's right. To make up for a wrong. And I'm committed to doing what I can. to try to make things right. It just goes to show that I'm actually a good person. 
So I choose to acknowledge that intention. I'm also allowing myself to see. I cannot feel bad enough to change the past. I cannot feel bad enough to make anyone else happier. Limiting my own happiness cannot increase anybody else's happiness. For all the people who've suffered because of the accident, no one is experiencing greater joy because I'm suffering. And part of me might say, maybe not, but they'd be really pissed off if I were happy. They would suffer more if I suffered less. And I love and appreciate those parts of me. that might think that makes sense. Anyone who would want me to suffer is somebody who's suffering. I cannot decrease their suffering by suffering more. I want them to feel more peace. I can't give what I don't have. I choose to be open to the possibility that the best thing I can do for everyone involved is to heal, feel more peace. And since everything is energy, and we're all connected. Me feeling more peace helps other people feel more peace. And some people might not feel that way. There might be people who want me to continue to suffer. And I might feel an obligation to do so. I'm allowing myself to get clear for myself. That's not going to help them. I feel responsible for what's happened. And I choose to do all the good that I can do. Me continuing to suffer is not doing more good. I'm allowing myself to be clear about that. And hopefully everyone else will be clear about that. But I can't wait for everyone to understand that. I'm robbing myself and others. If I stay stuck because others insist on being stuck. It's not that I'm blaming them. Everyone's doing the best they can. And I don't know what their suffering is. And even though I can take responsibility for my part, I'm not responsible for their continued suffering. I choose to send them peace. So I'm clearing what doesn't feel like peace inside of me. I choose to be open to the possibility. 
I really do deserve peace. I deserve joy. Not only do I deserve those, me feeling those is beneficial to others. I'm doing good by allowing myself to feel good. I'm clearing any fear that I might need to hang on to this suffering so that I pay more attention. All this fear that if I don't continue to suffer, I might cause another accident or do harm in some other way. And I'm letting that go. The more peace I feel, the more clearly I can think, the better the choices that I make. I am allowed to be happy. It's good for me to be happy. I'm allowing myself to feel peace in body, mind, and spirit. Take a deep breath. Let it go. And uh, with your eyes closed, just check in and see what's going on in there. And uh, you guys want to share with me what what's going on in there? Yeah, that was good. That was good because it, it touched on so many things that I feel by association <laughs> with, with my son and what we've gone through. Yeah. And um, I do carry a lot of the shame and guilt as our family towards another family. Yeah. But also some of the things that you were tapping on, um, they connect me with my son because I know he's feeling that pain and I carry the pain because he's feeling the pain. <laughs> yeah, that's lovely. Thank you. Mm. Yeah, I, I would say that I do feel more like a three now a lot mm -hmm. less tightness in, in my breathing. It was very emotional to say some of those things out loud. So it's very important for those listening. And I would offer, I started to say, not just deserve, but worthy, you know, as, as a human, you know, in humanity, that we're still a person. We are more than just our accident. And you honored the event, which I thank you, because that should always be important. But then by also honoring me as a person or whoever is joining with us in this experience. So that was very emotional. So I invite folks to just keep tapping. Um, when you're doing the tapping, you may sometimes just feel like sticking to one point and that's fine. Go with your gut instinct. Sometimes when I'm talking to, to folks, I'll always be tapping the collarbone points just to continue clearing stuff out. Um, here's the thing. Almost any of us, virtually everybody on this planet has somehow inadvertently been at least somehow connected to some discomfort that somebody else has experienced. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the, the old thing of let, let he is without sin cast the first stone and, and folks who will say, Oh, you should feel bad because you did this. It's like, and have you never ever been somehow involved in someone else feeling uncomfortable? 
And it's not to play a whataboutism thing, but just a recognition that as human beings, we're imperfect. Right. And it may be we said something insensitive that someone was hurt by. It may be that we have caused uh, an accident that caused actual physical harm. There's all kinds of levels of this. Um, there are people are, are, are service members who have to intentionally cause harm for you know what what we hope is for a greater good in times of protecting us and it's like so if somebody does that it's like oh well you're you're emotionally you get a pass because you know that it's and and so looking at them going at what level we we have this the these levels that would you know who's the judge saying mm, you have to feel bad about it. this is you know and, and some, for some of us, it may be even the slightest little thing of, you know, somebody might make a comment that somebody misunderstands and feels hurt. And we may know that we had no intention of saying that, and, and they may have totally misunderstood it. But for some of us, we may say, I have to feel like crap now. And, and we punish ourselves. So recognizing that as humans, we are, we get hurt. And, uh, and we may be involved in someone else being hurt. And, you know, certainly that's, that's that sense of obligation of if this person is not willing to heal, I can't heal until they do. Yeah. And, you know, and then, and then we stay stuck based on the, you know, who's the person who's most insistent on staying in pain. And some people will, can, will feel, you know, the, a family member of somebody that, that you may have hurt or who may have died and saying, if they, um, if they feel like they're not allowed to feel good because they have survivor's guilt, they may not have been involved in the accident in any way, but they may feel, I dishonor this person's memory if I allow myself to move on. And if I can't move on, then how can you move on? And we want to be able to say, Mm -hmm. well, let me try to show you, not because in, in a way of, you know, in your face, <laughs> it's, but a matter of if we're still here, we're worthy and deserving of, of joy. Yes. And one of the things that I say mm -hmm. most often in, uh, in, in all of my tapping rounds, or in many of my tapping rounds is, um, in fact, I'm going to have everyone repeat this while we're tapping. I am a magnificent child of the universe. I'm a, I'm a magnificent child of, the child of God. Okay. Child of God as well. And, and whatever's comfortable. I, okay. Because some people have trauma around the word God. I tend to use yeah. universe because people who prefer God yeah. might be offended, but they're not tra as traumatized as somebody who has that. So whatever word works for you. Yes. Um, <laughs> so I'm a magnificent mm. child of the universe. Worthy and deserving mm -hmm. of the best this world has to offer. Right. Worthy and deserving of the best this has to, world has to offer. And yeah. there is nothing that is too good for me. There is nothing that is too good. There is nothing that is too good for me. Yeah, mm -hmm. Too often we'd say, accept that, but all of us might come up with some reason of why I couldn't or shouldn't feel worthy and deserving mm -hmm. of health, wealth, happiness, love. Mm -hmm. And it's like, if, if I'm here, obviously I, I want to take responsibility for anything that I've done and do what I can to make it right. But I cannot make it right by being in pain. Yeah. You know, it's like the, the quote from Martin Luther King Jr. Darkness cannot clear out the darkness. Only light can do that. <clears throat> and for those who might <clears throat> wish us ill, because of however we might be involved or wish our family members ill and just send them love. I'm sorry that you're yeah. suffering. I am sending you love, but I can't send you love and peace if I don't have, if that's not what I'm feeling inside. Sure. Yeah. And, and the limits of how much love and peace we should be feeling is completely arbitrary. It really is arbitrary based on our programming. And it's like, Okay, how is that serving me? 
And in order to serve God, source, universe, community, society, is this stuff that I'm holding on to helping me do that? Right. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, Brad, I have um, deep compassion for people who have caused an accident when they know that the accident, that the decisions they made leading up to the accident were really not good decisions. There might have been alcohol involved or um, negligence on servicing a vehicle or um, hopping into a car. I know in New Zealand we constantly have these accidents where young kids have hopped into a car together and there's, there's been partying and whatnot going on around the event and then the tragedy happens. And so I have this deep sorrow themselves up for the decisions they made leading up to that accident and they know that there's an enormous amount of judgment from society generally yeah. um, so I wonder if we can yes. tap to address that yes um, everyone just close your eyes real quick yeah. and say I need to beat myself up I need to beat myself up. Or I need to punish myself. I need to feel guilt. I need to feel shame. Whatever, whatever words come up. And as we go through this, yeah. So as we go through this tapping round, feel free to use whatever words come up. And I'll just, I'll just or or feel free to say the words that I'm saying. And if the words that I'm saying don't feel right, by saying them, it, you're not going to cause yourself more pain. It's not like well, I wasn't beating myself up, but now that you're making me say that, <laughs> it's like it's like if you have if you spill orange juice on your counter and you take a rag and you're wiping it up. It's not like saying if I say coffee, coffee, coffee. Oh, now there's orange juice and coffee. So <laughs> it's like no, whatever you're saying with the tapping, we're still going to be cleaning out the uh, the disruption. Yeah. Side of the hand even though I need to beat myself up. Even though I need to beat myself up. I choose to love and accept myself. Even though I need to beat myself up. I choose to love and honor myself. Even though I need to beat myself up. I need to keep being punished. And if no one else is around to punish me, I need to do it myself until I get permission to stop. And even though I need to punish myself, I choose to deeply and completely love, honor, and accept myself. And maybe anyone else who might be involved in this. Eyebrow. All this need to punish myself. All this need to beat myself up. Because I know others might want to. Maybe if I punish myself first... Others will be lenient with me. Maybe they'll be more willing to forgive me. If they see that I'm dedicated to punishing myself. All right, as long as you're punishing yourself. As long as you're beating yourself up, then I don't have to. And I'm processing all these feelings. I'm also clearing that belief that I need to keep beating myself up to teach myself a lesson. I 
I recognize that I may have made some bad choices. I don't need to beat myself up to remind myself of that. If I allow myself to forgive myself, that doesn't give me permission to make the same bad mistake. It's not going to give me the freedom to make the same bad mistake. And the more peace I feel, the better the choices I make. If I'd allowed myself to feel more peace, I may not have made those choices in the first place. all this need to keep punishing myself. I'm allowing myself to process that. Actually, let's stay on each point a little bit longer now. So tap in the eyebrow point. I'm now releasing all of the sadness and trauma in all of the roots and the deepest cause. of all of this suffering about this accident. Side of the eye. I'm now releasing all of the anger and resentment in all of the roots and the deepest cause of all this suffering about this accident. Under the eye. I'm now releasing all of the fears and doubts in all of the roots and the deepest cause of all of this suffering about this accident. Under the nose, I'm now releasing all of the embarrassment and humiliation in all of the roots and the deepest cause of all of this suffering about this accident. Under the mouth, I am now releasing all of the shame and guilt in all of the roots and the deepest cause of all of this suffering about this accident. Collarbone, I'm now releasing any remaining fears in all of the roots and the deepest cause of any suffering about this accident. Under the arm, I'm now releasing all of the low self-esteem in all of the roots and the deepest cause of all of this suffering about this accident. giving myself permission to let that go. I won't forget, but I can forgive. I'm allowing myself to forgive myself. At what point are we not allowed to forgive ourselves? None of us has led a perfect life. I'm open to the possibility that I'm worthy and deserving of forgiveness. And as I allow that, I have freedom to do much more good in the world. Allowing myself to forgive myself is actually a gift to others. So I choose to be willing to do that. 
and I forgive myself for beating up on myself, believing that that was required. I'm sentencing myself to time already served. I'm setting myself free to experience more peace in body, mind, and spirit. Take a deep breath. And close your eyes and just see what's going on inside. Thoughts or comments about that? Yeah, that's great. That's great. <clears throat> um, I, I, and I find it incredibly emotional to do that. I can't imagine what it feels like when you're the one directly responsible for the, the pain that's been caused. So um, thank you. For that. <clears throat> yeah. You're welcome. Yeah. Thank you for being willing, and this is to you too, and also to anyone watching this. Thank you for being willing, because it. We get emotional. It is a great act of courage to be willing to even consider this, especially with with all of the beliefs you might hear from other people telling you why you couldn't or shouldn't, but that does not serve anyone. Even though they might think it does, anyone who thinks that they're benefiting from your guilt is mistaken. Their higher self is not benefiting from that. Give them something better than what they're asking for. And um, I, obviously there's no expectation that here in this uh, 40 so minutes, we uh, are necessarily going to clear up everything that might be experienced. And I know that this might have brought up more stuff. And hopefully among, I have over a thousand videos on YouTube, you know, hopefully the different things that have, that have come up, you might find a, a video that helps you and continue to process this. I certainly encourage you to, to work with someone because there are some places we really shouldn't go by ourselves. <laughs> And, uh, you know, find a, a partner, a therapist, somebody uh, who can hold a safe space for you as you continue moving through these. But, yeah. and, and even the fact that you are here is evidence that part of you knows that it's a good thing to continue setting yourself free. Yeah. If you truly believed that, yes, you should be sentenced to misery for the rest of your life and guilt and shame you wouldn't be here right now and yeah. your freedom is a gift to others your happiness is a gift to others your peace is a gift to others so thank you for doing that and thanks to both of you for this opportunity to uh you know play some small role in uh, facilitating some more of that peace yes wonderful Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. My pleasure. My pleasure. And uh, for those of you seeing this, both groups are going to have this. If you're watching this on YouTube, please look in the information box below the description box, and I'll have links to um, to Jen and Kate's resources. Uh, and um, thank you both for what you're doing. Yeah. And, and to you, yeah, thank you so much, so much for attitude. <laughs> it's fabulous. My blessing yeah. to get to do this. Mm -hmm.